figured after shedding some light this morning, I would shed a little bit more light on light. It just so happens that a lot of the themes that we've been singing about this afternoon dealt with heaven. And I would like to talk a little bit about that this afternoon. If you would, be turning over to Revelation chapter 21. Now before we read from the Bible, I would like to cause you to think about a few things. Um... I typically wear sunglasses, especially when I'm mowing the grass up here. And it just so happens that the sunglasses I wear are polarized. Typically that type of lens is used for fishing because it filters the light and suppose it helps fishermen see the fish in the water. I don't have great vision anyway, so I can't really see fish. I've never been able to try that out, but that's at least what they say. Now, through the years, scientists have developed a way to focus beams of light. We know them as lasers. Well, for some reason, they decided to see what would happen if they shot a beam of light, and then they wanted to see what happens if they install a polarized light filter for that beam of light. And basically you get what happens when you wear polarized sunglasses. When you turn them, it kind of goes dark. Well, the purpose of that filter is to remove a lot of the chaotic light, if you will, and you're allowing that beam of light to go straight through. And then the light you see at the end of that is a little bit more pure. It's more organized light. Because when you... You, fly, you shine a flashlight, you, you have your initial beam, but you've also kind of got a scattering effect around where you're shining the light on. Well, they said, okay, let's do it again. So you have this polarized filter, and then they turned it 90 degrees to make a second filter, and you have basically even more pure light going through these two polarizing filters well he said okay let's play with rocks I'm a guy I like rocks so this piqued my interest well they chose a very specific kind of rock and many people wear them today they're gemstones they shot this light this double filtered polarized light at certain gemstones and they recognize something quite astonishing. Certain gemstones would absorb that light, and regardless of their physical color, they would exhibit all colors of the rainbow. They would turn clear. There's a name for that. It's anisotropic. Other gemstones, when you do the same thing, regardless of their color, turn as black as coal. That's called isotropic. Now, if you, look, take, if you take a look at Revelation chapter 21 and verse 19, it says, And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. We would call these gemstones. And many of these stones we would use for jewelry nowadays. It says the first foundation was jasper. The second, sapphire. The third, chalcedony. The fourth, an emerald. The fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, sardius. The seventh, chrysolite. The eighth, beryl. The ninth, a topaz. The tenth, a chrysoprasus. The eleventh, adjacent the twelfth and amethyst now this might strike you as strange but where's diamond in this list diamond after all is a girl's best friend right admittedly it's a pretty rock when you put this double polarized light on a diamond guess what happens it turns black 
When you put this light on a ruby or a garnet, what happens? Those gemstones turn black. Now you look at each gemstone listed in verses 19 and 20, and you shoot this focused, double polarized beam of light on each of these 12 gemstones that are labeled as foundations for the city of heaven, guess what happens? Each and every one of them are clear. That's fascinating to me. Each of these 12 gemstones are anisotropic. Meaning, the purest of light turns these gemstones clear. They're even more beautiful than we can observe them as right now. Now, when you look at John, or 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, the latter part of that verse says, God is light, and in Him is no darkness. When you drop down to Revelation chapter 21, verse 23, it says, And the city, that is heaven, had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. In verse 25, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there is no night there. And you drop down to chapter 22, verse 5, And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the, law, the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. You cannot get any more pure light than God Almighty. It is His glory that lights heaven. And for a, a human perspective, we can appreciate the beauty of these gemstones. But they get even prettier. In heaven, where there is nothing but light, these gemstones become more precious. They're more beautiful. Now, the idea behind this little talk, one major point that can come from this is, this proves the inspiration of the Bible. How can any person at the time of the writing of this book consistently know these scientific principles regarding these gemstones. You think the Apostle John really gave any thought to how Jasper looks in double polarized light? You think he ever just casually used, yeah, these gemstones are anisotropic? I doubt it. But God who wrote the Bible used these terms to mean something. He used gemstones that we find for evidently a long time in our history find very precious. And each and every single one of these is consistently pure in the presence of pure light. And secondly, it illustrates just how heaven or how beautiful heaven must be. We sing that song from time to time as well. You see, there is no night there. Not even from the perspective of these gemstones. Diamond is not mentioned. or Ruby is not mentioned. And neither is garnet. But I'm just glad emerald is because that's my birthstone. That's neither here nor there. But you look at these different colors. And that sheds further light, pun not, not intended. On who can hear the gospel. Who all can be saved. All these different colors. And they're found equal in Christ. The gospel has the power to save mankind. Jesus died to give us eternal salvation. Not just salvation while we're here. But salvation once we die. And if we're faithful when we go to heaven. He has made it in such a way that we will never lose our salvation once we do make it to heaven. And it's these sort of things that we can look forward to seeing and observing once we get there. We must live accordingly in order to reap the full benefits 
of what God has promised to us. There is no night there. That strikes at the very core of heaven. It's one thing to say, oh yeah, there's light there. There's light here. You stand behind me, there's a big shadow. There won't be big shadows there. There won't even be little shadows there. There will be no possibility for sin. There will be no shadow or darkness in turning with God. He doesn't do that anyway. That's usually what that term means. There's no darkness in God. He doesn't change his mind at his whims. Now this afternoon, if you would prefer to render obedience to the gospel of Christ, that saving gospel, that will one day allow you to observe heaven yourself, why not take the steps necessary to become a Christian this afternoon? However, if you have allowed sin back into your life, repent, confess, we'll pray with you, for you. If either of these apply to you, please make it known as together we stand and sing the song selected.